welcome to. Um, and welcome to today's Sports Authority Board of Directors meeting. It is April 21st, 2016, and we are glad to be back here at First Tennessee Park. We appreciate the sounds for hosting us this morning. As always, um, the appeals process for any decision of this body can be found at the top of today's agenda. Our meeting minutes from our March 17th meeting are included in the board packet. Hopefully everyone's had an appropriate time to review. Are there any questions or additions that need to be noted? Is there an inter um, motion for approval of the minutes? Move approval. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes are approved and now we will have our executive director's report from our very own Monica Faulknesson. Good morning. Good morning to the board and to everyone here. Thank you for being here this morning. We always appreciate the, the time you take to, to come out and be with us. Um, that is not lost on us. I would like to introduce you to a special guest in the audience. She doesn't know I'm going to do this. Um, Rachel Hamby, if you'll stand up. She is a junior at Lipscomb University and she's here with us this morning. Rachel is interested in pursuing a career in sports management. I've had the opportunity to meet her. She actually interviewed me for a class project and I invited her to come and be with us this morning and she said yes. So we are glad to have you Rachel and I hope that you all will introduce yourselves to her and make her feel welcome. This is always um, I think a, a wonderful opportunity for our students and, um, and just to be able to, to meet you all and to see what we do. So thank Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, you have the agenda before you. In addition to our typical facility reports and updates, we're going to have a special presentation from Bo Roberts, who chaired the Temple Statue Committee, and we'll also receive some information from the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation on some on some proposed improvements to the visitor center inside of the arena. As you look at the agenda, are there any questions? If not, I'll move forward and I'll um, try to keep my report brief. First, I'd like to, um, we, we've said this and, and our chair has also encouraged all of the board to get involved with the Sports Council. And if you're not a member, to join. There's some great things going on over there. Yesterday, we had a fantastic lunch um, and program. Um, which was part of the Women in Sports Initiative, and I know some of some of you were, were there. Um, it was emceed by Don Davenport and featured Rosalind Durant, who's a vice president of Think College Programming at ESPN, and really was just a remarkable program and event. And so we would love to see you all come out and just to get involved in what's going on um, with the Women in Sports Initiative, but also just in the in the larger council. So if you're not a member or you're interested. Um, you can you can talk to Margaret Bim. You can talk to me, and, and we'll we'll do what we can to get you involved. Um, I would like to give you a quick update on the stadium refurbishment project. I know Larry Adama and Ed Henley and Jordan Wyman are here. There's not as much to report, so they aren't going to give a formal report, but I did want to give you a few updates. First, we are almost complete in terms of the seat replacement um, on the entire upper deck, both the east side and the west side. And the seats, because I've gotten this question, the seats will be ready for Beyonce. <laughs> on May the 5th. Um, the concrete repairs are continuing to be done. The crews are working on those, and um, especially on the upper deck. And, and we're moving right along. Um, about 60% of the restrooms and concession stands have received new waterproof coatings. Um, the expansion joints have have arrived. A lot of those are on site. There is a picture in your, in your packet, and so you can see um, that the shipment has come in and installation has begun. Um, and then uh, what we all are concerned and, and continuing to keep, I guess, on our radar is just the time. And, and we're doing well. <coughs> the, the budget is on track. The timeline is good. And so we um, will continue to move forward. And we will hear from Larry next month. Um, I 
think all of you had a chance to, to see the Ed Temple statue, but you may not have seen it since it has been moved up the, green, up the Greenway to its permanent location. And so that was done um, maybe about a month ago, several weeks ago, and you can, you're more than welcome to go out and look if you have a chance. It really is such a, a wonderful um, commemoration of, of Coach Temple, who unfortunately is not with us this morning, um, but has asked me to to give you all his best, and he says he hopes to be back soon. Um, finance committee. We have a finance committee meeting that is scheduled for May the 10th at 9 a.m. at Lindsley Hall, and we hope that you will um, be able to attend, regardless of whether or not you're on the committee. It really is a great forum just to get some additional information and details that we aren't always able to go into here at the meeting. Um, and then finally, our budget hearing with the Metro Council, the Budget and Finance Committee, is scheduled for um, Wednesday, May the 11th at 4.15. And if you're interested in attending, then please let me know. Are there any questions? If not, that concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you, Monica, for um, that update. Always helpful. Um, this morning, we are happy to have the Ed Temple uh, statute uh, presentation. And, um, and uh, as everyone knows, um, J.D. Elliott uh, impacted this board and so many of us uh, personally and professionally through all of his work through the community, the Memorial Foundation and um, his dedication to the Ed Temple statute. And uh, he, he worked very hard to help um, his friend, Coach Temple, and, and uh, making sure that the statue was, uh, was, was put together here at its home at um, the ballpark. And we are always um, appreciative and reflective of all of the work of uh, J.D. Elliott, and we're honored to have our friend Bo Roberts here today to give us a presentation in honor of his life's work and, and legacy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, with me is Howard Gentry, who's a member of our committee uh, to raise the funds and help get the statue honoring our dear friend and, and uh, icon in the world of sports, in the world of people, uh, Ed Temple. Um, Howard and I, you know, like many of you, wear different hats, and I'm going to put on a different hat for just a second before I get into this and echo what Monica said about we're both on the board of the National Sports Council and encourage you to become active in that. It's amazing after 20 years, I run into people and they say, well, how do I get involved? They don't really know that it's something you can't just join. And, and the program that Monica referred to, that Kim, your chairman, Madam Chairman, was there, um, and of course Margaret, um, it was, it was marvelous, and I, it was great to see the, the young women and, and the, all the women who were there, as well as other, other members. So I'll take that hat off now and wear, wear this hat here today. Uh, the Ed Temple statue was, a, was created, and, and, and the idea, and, and came along and, and had strong support and they, all the way through from your constituents, the sports community. Um, the National Predators, Sean Henry, who I think is here, and Jeff when he was here, Jeff Cogan, uh, were the first, among the first to step up and among other things hosted a uh, fundraising event by Mayor Carl Dean, who was also very committed to this project. Uh, they are at the, uh, at Bridgestone uh, to start to kick off the drive. Uh, the Tennessee Titans heavily involved and actually gave the largest single contribution uh, to this. The National Sounds were very cooperative, even Doug and his folks, in terms of making all the arrangements and coordinating with them in terms of the, uh, ground, the dedication last August. And so the sports community, the sports council itself stepped up and made a donation uh, in strong support of this. So sports, your sports community was heavily involved in, 
this, but none more than your body, the sports authority itself, and and your former chairman, late chairman, J.D. Elliott, and that's the purpose that we requested and then discussed and 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 by, with Monica and uh, and Kim to to come before you and present to you and with us a joint resolution uh, paying tribute to J.D. Elliott and his family and his foundation. Uh, I, I didn't know uh, J.D. Elliott before this process started. I knew of him. Everybody knows about J.D. Elliott. Didn't know him until we sat down. Monica was there. Toby was there. The very first meeting to talk about this project and go over it. And in his own quiet way, he, of course, he loves Apple as we all do, and wanted to see this happen, but said, you know, I, I, I have some friends on some other foundations, and I, I think we can can help out and support this. And and that was all he needed to say at that point. We went on and put everything together. And those of you who do know him, and as all of you do, um, I got to know his quiet steps, how he was through with us throughout the process as chairman of the Sports Authority, but as J.D. Elliott also. And he, his foundation made the first uh, major contribution following the Predators. Um, J.D. Elliott gave personally to this, and then he <coughs> was in touch with his friends on some other foundations. And the bottom line uh, that more than one third of the funds raised to erect the statue, uh, J.D. Elliott had a direct hand in. That's the contribution he made without wanting any recognition or any acknowledgement of it. And that was J.D. Elliott. So we have a, a resolution that I think you have before you that I'll read in just a moment. I'd like to ask Scott Perry, who's head of the Memorial Foundation, and J.D. Elliott's and Anita Elliott, to please, if they would, come up. And we're so appreciative of them being here. Let me read this resolution honoring J.D. Elliott. Whereas J.D. Elliott was, Elliott was chairman of the Metro Nashville Sports Authority and the Memorial Foundation, and whereas Mr. Elliott provided outstanding leadership both from those positions and also as a private citizen in raising funds for the uh, community to honor Coach Ed Temple with a statue, and whereas Mr. Elliott was a quiet, behind-the-scenes leader who contributed through his foundation and personally. He also was influential in encouraging other foundations and community leaders to join this important historical effort. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ed Temple Statue Committee and the Metro Nashville Sports Authority expresses to the Memorial Foundation and most importantly to the J.D. Elliott family our sincerest gratitude, our sincerest gratitude and public recognition for not only this important project, but also his lifelong commitment to improving the lives of citizens in this region. By, signed by the Ed Temple Statue Committee and the Metro Sports Authority. I present this to you for whatever action, then we, then we have a gift to give them. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Anita, and Scott for attending today. We all um, are very fond of our memories with J.D., and he certainly um, impacted our lives and lives of so many in so many ways. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the resolution. So moved. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Having adopted this and we how much we appreciate your effort, I, Howard would like to present a gift we'd like to give to the to the J.D. Elliott family and the foundation. It's a mock-up of the Ed Temple statue. All right. Well, um, thank you very much on behalf of the foundation and our board of directors and the family with Anita here. We want to thank you for this honor. J.D. was honored to serve on this body for all the years he served, and uh, he was a humble man. He would not seek this kind of recognition, so but we, we thank you for that.
you and thank you Vice Mayor Gentry for attending today and being a part of it. Uh, at this time we have our first Tennessee Park report. Doug Scopel. Yep. Good morning. Special Welcome sounds. back to the ballpark. Now that we're into baseball season, it's, it's a good time for everybody to be out here. So thank you for being here. Uh, season opened a few weeks ago. Uh, prior to that, since our last meeting, as I've talked about in previous meetings, we hosted the Vanderbilt Belmont game out here with an attendance of over 4,000 fans that came out. So that was a real good turnout for the first of what we hope is a, a long standing um, series of collegiate games um, to go along with the Sounds games out here at the ballpark. Um, we'll Hosted our first eight games of the season beginning April 7th. Uh, Mother Nature wasn't the best partner for us, but we got them all in despite a little bit of rain. Through the first eight games, among all the teams in our league that did host games the same week we did, we had the second highest attendance of that group. And obviously, as the weather gets better, we get more into summer, we expect that to keep increasing. Um, we also hosted our first midweek game, the Wednesday day game. All seven of our uh, Wednesday games this year are noon games to try to encourage the businessmen and other people to come out. And that was well attended as well. And we expect those to also be a success. Um, on opening day, um, I know many of you were here and hopefully you will see you out here a lot at games throughout the summer. Uh, we did something that we hadn't done in my long tenure of the Sounds. You see it a lot at football games and other places, but for the national anthem, we invited over 100 soldiers down from Fort Campbell and had a big American flag that we put out that basically covered the entire outfield here. That was really cool to have them here and do something special to honor them and their families. And our players came out and got together with all them and just uh, you know interacted a little bit. Those are always fun moments and ways that we can kind of show our appreciation to the military and in our community. Um, we awarded during our first homestand our first four scholarships through the Nashville Sounds Foundation, which uh, that really got started for us last year here at the new ballpark. It was a new initiative for us so that was the start of what we again hope to be a continual growing effort as we move forward through our different fundraisers we do here at the ballpark and other places um a few things coming up at the ballpark other than, well, we got a busy month for Sounds games. In the month of May, we have 17 games during the month, including 16 in a 21-day span. So that'll test our staff's endurance and uh, a lot of fun at the ballpark and a quick uh, turnaround amount of time. Um, we have, uh, before that, April 30th, the St. Jude Marathon has announced, and we're, we're pleased to do this, that the ballpark will be part of the run of, of the course for the marathon. So those that are in the full marathon, it'll be around the 16 mile mark. They'll come in here off of Junior Gilliam Way, go around our concourse, and then get to do a lap around the field when we'll have our cameramen show them up on the big guitar scoreboard, which will kind of be a unique experience for them. And then as they exit onto Fifth Avenue to reconnect with the course, the TSU band will be there as an entertainment act. So that'll all kind of tie in right there by the Ed Temple statue, which we're, we're happy to, to have on our property. And that's just another reason uh, that we can help celebrate that and, and educate people about him and, and everything that goes into that. Um, the last Last thing I want to mention is we announced uh, since the last meeting that in conjunction with Strategic Hospitality, who's the group we worked with for the band box, uh, right behind that in the grass area, they're going to put in a, a nine-hole putt-putt golf course that'll be available during games and hopefully for some other non-games. So expect to break ground on that sometime early May and have it open by the end of June, weather permitting with construction. So we're getting busy as we get going with the season. That's that's my update for today. Try to keep it short and sweet. We do have a lunch for you guys afterwards that'll be served. Uh, if you have time and want to stay around, we'll serve it right over here. So. Any questions for Doug? Just a quick minute. Doug, you may have mentioned this last time, but the, the bids to host the Southeastern Conference Baseball Tournament, yep. when, when do you expect to hear about that? We And that was uh, us in conjunction with the City of Nashville and the Nashville Sports Council. The Sports yeah. Council took the lead on that. Obviously, we're a big part of it as the facility. Mm -hmm. I talked to Scott last week, Scott Ramsey, and they expect to, the announcement to be made either during or right after this year's SEC Baseball Tournament, so sometime in late May. Great. So I don't even think this at our meeting next month I'll have an update, but hopefully yeah. shortly thereafter. Right. And we'll circulate that to you guys when we hear one way or another. That'll be exciting. Doug, I just want to tell you how much I've enjoyed the press about Andrew Triggs uh, and featuring him as a local player. My son went to school with him, and his mom is our pediatrician when oh, they were young. You. But I just think having that local flavor for a player and maybe some other players get to know him in the press, you know, their personal stories would just yes. be great because it 
really makes it more fun to watch the team knowing some history yeah. of the players. Absolutely. So. Just to, to touch on that briefly, those that don't know, Andrew Triggs is one of our pitchers. Uh, you know, we don't have the we work with the Oakland A's. They provide our roster players, so we don't have the ability to go sign local guys. Right. So it's the rare occasion that we do have Nashville natives on our team. And he went to MBA, graduated, right. grew up here. Uh, he's really excited. He's got a lot of family and friends at all the games, and, and it is great to have a local guy. I think he's our first Nashvilleian to play for the Sound since R.A. Dickey about oh, 10 years gosh. ago. So it's yes. great. Okay. Thank, thank you, Doug. Next up, we have our Nissan Stadium report. We have representatives from the Titans that I know will introduce themselves and uh, let us know who they represent. And I know Doug will do that next time. <laughs> Good morning, uh, board members. Uh, sorry, I wasn't here last last meeting. Bob Flynn. Yes, Bob Flynn. So, sorry, I wasn't here uh, last meeting. I just went on vacation that day, but I'm glad to be back. Uh, first of all, before I get started, I want to say congrats to the Predators for making the playoffs and uh, you know tonight's game. And you know, I know our coach will be there. And I think our GM will be there. So good luck tonight. I will be there. Not that y'all really care about that, but I know they'll be there. Uh, and then uh, before I get into this, you know, uh, we made a big trip. I think it was last week, our general manager, and uh, so it's a lot of excitement. And you know, we've got our uh, draft party next Thursday. No sprinklers will go off, so that won't that will be taken care of. I've learned how to turn that off, also. So, but uh, you know, I was unfortunate, but uh, it, we still had a good night that night. So, but now just to try to keep this uh, rolling, I'll try to go forward with it. So, you know, just like I usually try to tell you what's happening in the in the building, we've got the, the you know, rock and roll marathon coming up uh, two weeks from this weekend. At the same time, Beyonce is going to start moving in on that Saturday. Uh, I put the little notes below it just to show you how, how long some of these events stay in the building because it's not a in and out. I mean, the, you know, as you see after Beyonce, we go CMA, which is, the, they're in there for three weeks. So it's a, it's a long time. It's a, you know, it's a big show in there. And then uh, right after that, we go to Monster Jam. So that's another. Uh, four or five days in there, and then we have the Fourth of July, which takes up three days, and and then uh, probably our, our big announcement, which we did, I think, about two weeks ago, was the Guns N' Roses uh, concert, which uh, it's going to be on Saturday, and we've got this nice little banner up there uh, on the southwest or southeast uh, part of our ramps, and you see they're painted there. Something else in my presenta presentation, and when we first set this in, we only had a preseason schedule, but now we have our full season ske schedule, but. Uh, this just goes into after Guns N' Roses, we do have a beach body private event there for two weeks, and then after that we have two home games. So it's uh, you know we're staying busy over there, and on top of what uh, you know Larry, Larry and his group are doing, they're doing a fabulous job of watching what's happening over the building. I mean the seats are going in, the expansion joints are going in. Um, it's really looking a lot better. Ralph said how much how how good the outside looks. The inside is starting to look a lot better. You know we're still going to do some more painting and stuff like that, but. Uh, I think the stadium is starting to look a lot better, and I, I think we we all are. I know I'm very very happy and proud of what, the way it's starting to look right now. We, we still have work to, work to be done, though. Uh, well, so I'll just show you some quick uh, pictures here. The, the east side ramp, you know, they had to take off the winter for, to finish uh, before they could finish the east side. Now the ramps are done, so they look a lot better over there. It just said it just brings a lot of life to the uh, to the stadium. Look, makes it look a lot nicer. There's a paint, the stairs as well, and the pressure washing. This is something that uh, wasn't uh, anticipated in the uh, in the in the uh, bill or the for for the um, stadium stadium seats in the expansion joint, but we decided we needed to do it because it's a great time to do it. So we're, we're doing this, and uh, it looks a whole heck of a lot better. There's, I mean, it's just amazing how, how nice. I feel sorry for the for the poor couple of people that are up there every day pressure washing, but they're doing a fabulous job, and I'm, I'm really happy that we decided to do that. Cause, and they're going to do every level of the stadium, so it's, it's something that needed to be done. The light rakers, uh, I can put this up every, week, every month if you wanted me to, because it takes four or five weeks for, for each light raker, but but as you see, we've got three of them done now, and they just look that much brighter. And I know Monica. Well, we've talked about doing the uh, the bus shelters in, in in the parking lots, lot A, which I think the downtown partnership is looking about painting those because those are faded. And then we're also looking at painting the the rest of the yellow bollards and gates in the uh, in the parking lots because those things are you know they're just they're worn. 
uh, fencing that goes along with that. Uh, any questions for me? Because I know we're trying to keep this going, but I'm glad to be here. I'm, I met the two new board members. Glad to meet you. I'm glad to have you. Told you it's a great team to be part of, so we appreciate you joining. Quick question on the pressure washing. Is that part of the... Uh, no. Well, that, okay, when you say we, yep. wasn't anticipated the Titans or... Yeah, we took it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. No, it, uh, it, it looks a lot much. better. That's all i got to say. It's worth it. Appreciate so, it. Any other questions? Ralph? No. Good. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Tina? Good morning. Good morning. So I just want to talk about some of the things we're doing in the community. Tina, will you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Everyone I needs am, to know you. Okay. I'm Tina Tuggle. I'm the Community Relations Director for the Tennessee Titans. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to talk with you all briefly about some of the things we've done recently here during the off-season in the community. Um, that's just a list of some of the things we've done most recently as well as some of the um, events that we have coming up. So we were able to host a regional spelling bee. A few weeks ago we heard, we got word that the regional spelling bee was going away because they just didn't have funding. Um, the Titans decided this was a fun way to kind of use our brand differently in the off season in the education space and so we stepped up and assumed um, the responsibility of sponsoring the regional spelling bee and this young lady is our winner. We're sending her to the national spelling bee in DC at the end of May. Um, she's excited and so we're going to send her up there and we'll have coverage for that. Hopefully she'll do very well and represent the state well. Um, we were also able to um, support this gentleman. He won the Tennessee Titans scholarship uh, for the Boys and Girls Club Youth of the Year. And we're going to have the, the winners come and be a part of our training camp. And we're hopeful to keep in touch with them and just see how their educational courses go. Tuesday night, we had our first annual pre-draft party, which was a lot of fun. We did it at ACME, um, with all proceeds benefiting the Sexual Assault Center. Um, it was a fun way to have our alumni come back, our current players be involved, as well as our GM and head coach, and uh, fans were able to pay and come hear some draft secrets and learn kind of some of the behind-the-scenes information that's happening for the upcoming draft. And with April being Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we thought it'd be a nice tie to have all proceeds benefit the Sexual Assault Center. And we have, we're kicking off our caravan April 30th. We are going to do four states this year. So we'll do Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky, as well as Mississippi. That's the new state we've added. But our players are excited to go out and meet and kind of cultivate their relationships and get everyone excited about our upcoming season. And lastly, we have our annual um, Titans 5K, which benefits Girls on the Run, which is a fun little um, group that helps keep young ladies getting healthy and staying healthy um, all while learning at the same time. So that's it for me. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Oh, yes. I think the Titans stepping up. One thing you find that uh, when you talk to people at the game or whatever, they come from all around here just to be a part of the Titan organization. It's not just Nashville, not just Tennessee. I enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, Tina. Janine Kaufman. Hello. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Great. Enjoying this beautiful spring weather. Um, one other thing that we did do is the Titans actually hosted the NFL digital meetings for all 32 clubs and the league here recently as well. And so they descended on Nashville. They had such a great time in Nashville. And it was a great way to showcase Nashville again and show what the city can do. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, I'm going to run into financials. There has not been a lot of change here. Um, we did, um, Bob Lackey, I got with Bob, and Bob actually on his own has changed up a little bit of the reports. Um, it's the same information. It's just presented, I think, in a little bit more user-friendly way, if you will. Um, so the first thing is the ticket tax summary. Again, if you'll remember, the ticket tax is $3. It's divided into two different funds, the dollar fund and the $2 fund. And the $2 fund currently has $348,000 in, in the fund. This money, again, is set aside, and it is used to pay the bonds that were for the initial improvements, um, which were the ribbon boards, the um, scoreboards, the new control room, the elevators to the South Bank, the distributed sound system, and there were two, two or three fan zones that were also used as part of this bond issue. So that money is committed for that as a reminder. 
The next is the dollar fund. And on the dollar fund, Bob um, took the liberty of um, kind of showing this, I think, in a little bit more user user friendly format. Thank you, Bob. And Bob's here today, too, if you have any questions, because these funds are actually held at Metro or Pinnacle Bank. The dollar fund, again, is, um, as a reminder, is used to fund the seat replacements that we were just talking about, the expansion joints, um, some of that leaking that's been going on at the stadium. And that's held in a variety of funds, as you can see here, and you can also see what the stadium loan is as well. Um, the next is the ticket tax paid to date. Now this one is a little bit differently. In the past, we have shown this on a calendar year. And so what Bob's done here is he has taken this and actually shown it on Metro's physical year. So I think that works better um, because it relays more into kind of the budget and gets us on track with kind of what Metro is doing versus calendar year. At the bottom here, you'll also see that there's a recap between the $2 and the dollar by year and then again in total. So I think that's kind of really helpful so you can see what's been paid in, but then you can also see what's been paid into the $2 fund and the $1 fund. Um, next is the user fee recap. Um, so again, we are paying in the Titans money into the user fee. We're doing that as, as an estimate at $162,000 over 10 months. We actually yesterday just made the third installment payment for that 162. So that will be reflected um, when we have our finance committee meeting uh, May the 10th. Um, next is the capital fund. And so the capital fund, again, um, there's a million dollars put into this fund every year. The total at this current time is 158000 And I really like the note that Bob added to this spreadsheet, which I think is really helpful, which also shows you when the next million dollar capital contribution will c come in, which is Metro's next fiscal year. Um, this is a capital fund summary since inception. So this breaks it down into the different buckets over time since inception of the capital fund. Um, and you can kind of see all the ins and the outs of that fund over time. And then this shows you our recap of unfiled reimbursement request and casualty receivable as of 413. So it's very recent. And um, there was not a lot of change, honestly, from last month to this month. Um, and then as a handout, we gave out the um, communication tool, which hopefully everyone has. Um, it's a tool, it's got kind of the different coloring. And again, that's been divided into three different buckets, which is completed, current and anticipated projects with totals on all of that. And again, there's not much change since last month. There's a few projects that have been moved from the anticipated list to the current list. We've started, for example, the work on the ticket office renovation where we're going to add several windows outside. So to better serve our customers, we're going to have an area inside the stadium when you first walk in, again, for customer service. Now that we are hosting a lot of additional um, events at Nissan Stadium, it's it's really important that as those new customers come, they have uh, you know enough will call windows, enough ticket windows for selling, and st and such like that. So that's that's part of that. So, but I'm happy to take any questions that you guys have at this time. No, you're right. That was um, that was part of our discussion last month, and and there was a um, a recommendation that was made by Dudley West, and we have had some conversations with the administration, and we're working on it. It it is um, it's a long term, right? This it's not something that we can just um, nail down and resolve in several weeks. But we are working with the administration. With the Titans, we'll continue to have discussions, and then we'll um, we'll keep you all updated. All right. Well, thank you all thank so you, much. Janine. I appreciate it. And I'll turn it over. We appreciate your presentation. Thank you all. Next on our agenda, we have a presentation from the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation. Um, they also are a tenant of uh, the Sports Authority. And we have Mr. Butch Spirit in here with us today who is going to update us on a uh, request 
I went before as as Butch and uh, and Deborah. I don't know if she's coming up or not, but um, I wanted to point you first of all to our lease agreement with the CBB, which is in your packets behind tab six. The visitor center. I think this is important to note that the visitor center, along with areas like the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, the Register of D, um, the space that housed the Central Police Precinct for however many years until their new uh, precinct was built, um, Sirius XM Studios. Those spaces in our lease with the operating and management lease with the arena are defined as reserved areas and um, are really excluded from the definition of the arena. So I think that's important to note as we begin this conversation. As you can see in section eight of the lease agreement, um, any improvements, changes, repairs, alterations, additions to, um, to their space are to be done at the sole expense of the NCVC and require written consent of the board. And then also, you know, advance approval in terms of the contractors and workmen. Um, and then clearly there, there would also need to be just some cooperation in terms of timelines with the arena and what's just going on in the building in general. So I wanted to note that as we as we move into the discussion. So, um, so Butch and Deb are gonna come. They're gonna walk us through some of the proposed improvements. You have the information that they sent to us in terms of a list there. Um, I think there are a couple of quotes and estimates. Um, I had, a couple weeks ago I had the opportunity to just walk through the visitor center with um, with Deborah and Dana who manages it on a daily basis and and they do I mean they do great work clearly but it um, it needs some updating I don't think there's any question about that um, and and you know as we get to this conversation and we, you can see what they're proposing some things um, you know may be done uh, immediately or in the near future there are going to be some projects that are going to require some additional I think communication and conversations with powers management um, but we wanted to go ahead and, and start the discussion and begin to move forward so I'll let Butch sure. take it from well, there. Thanks first of all it's been a while since I have uh, been back in front of you all so yeah. thanks for the work you do thanks for uh, letting us come back and I would be remiss if I didn't say what a great relationship we have with the sounds, the preds, and the titans. Uh, we're working flawlessly together. We're creating some events together. They're certainly all doing great on their own, but uh, relationship is as good as it's ever been. And uh, you all should know that, should hear it from people like us. And I know in the past there's always been a question, why aren't y'all working together? Well, we are, and it, it's good. So uh, let me also thank Monica. Uh, if I can lightheartedly say I beat on Toby for a while and I begged Emmett for uh, for help and uh, as is appropriate it took a woman to get our house in order and uh, thank you for, uh, for uh, helping us get to this point we uh, it's, well, it's probably been since the arena opened that there's been any real capital improvements in the in the glass tower. And we've done some cosmetic things and we have advanced the program. The space is great. We love it. We appreciate the relationship. Uh, over the last few years, uh, it seemed like always when we had an event, especially CMA Awards, uh, we'd have trash cans out catching water. Uh, and we kind of reached a point where we ran out of trash cans. And we were planning, included in this, was recalking all the windows in the tower. And it kind of came to our attention that there was a, a nice break where we could get in and do some work. And we didn't have a big window to come before you all. So between Monica and the mayor's office, they gave us permission to go ahead and get that done. So it was as least intrusive to other events going on as possible. So we just completed um, just under $80,000 worth of caulking on the windows. And so far, the building doesn't leak anymore. So we now have enough trash cans for our day-to-day -day business. We have also been looking at internally, uh, there's not enough electrical power in the tower. And the heating and cooling is not what it ought to be, especially during hockey season when the building is kept at such a cool temperature and outside is pretty cool. Uh, I keep our staff supplied 
in ski jackets and sweaters and they're bundled up. It's not the best appearance when visitors are coming in that we look like we're, we're freezing. So we would like to address those things inside and that's included on one of the sheets you've got. And then us and the Sports Hall of Fame and the Preds, we call the lobby box office area Switzerland. We all kind of look to each other who's responsible. And we've all taken turns doing the right thing there. Uh, but the restrooms out there, a the payphone that doesn't work, uh, well, the restrooms are not of the caliber of what they ought to be for any guests coming in that building. The building is too nice, too frequently used, and uh, too many, well, for me, everybody that comes in there is important. Uh, but we need to upgrade those facilities. So we have an immediate need we'd like to address on the restrooms. Current uh, contractor estimates have been in the 100, 125,000 range. We'd certainly work to get those costs down. So we know those are at our expense. Um, and we just like the green light to uh, begin to upgrade the facility to keep it in the standard that it started, that it deserves to be. So I'll I think one thing that, I, that I'll mention too, that, that area that is between the Visitor Center and the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame and the, the, the box office and, and the restrooms, um, you know, as Margaret and I have had several conversations and, and looking at drawings and diagrams, you know, we do believe that that is arena area. That's, um, that's, not, that's not a reserved area. Um, most likely it is your patrons and visitors and mm -hmm. same thing with the with the um, Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. They probably are using that space more than anyone else. Yeah, we um, probably use it the most or our guests, but right. you know, it gets used by all three. Right. So it, it's used by all three, but in terms of whose responsibility it is, we do believe that that is um, the arena. So we think that there needs to be some some further conversations with them and with work. powers and, and the management there. So I wanted to, to point that out as well. But if you haven't been over there, uh, you should do that. But it you would should be. Go. We use it for a lot of client events. We use it for press conferences. Uh, the African American Music Museum has asked for a press conference in two weeks. Mayor Barry used it during her campaign for a press event. So it gets a lot of attention. CMT used it for their top 20 countdown for a season, so they broadcast there. It, it gets a lot of eyeballs, a lot of conversation. And, and XM updated. tells people every day, 365 days of year, to come in the Arena Tower in downtown. Uh, Nashville and so visitors from all over the all over the world are, are coming in and we would we would like permission to get started and spend our money on your behalf and certainly working with Monica and the staff to make sure you're comfortable with who's doing the work. Bell Construction has done most of our bids and specs. I don't know, they've even said the job's too small for them, but they've assisted us on a gratis basis to help figure out everything, so we appreciate uh, their contribution as well, and we're, uh, we're game. Thank you. Hard, hard to see what's not the like. It's a, it's a good project. I'm happy to ask for you for it. some money, but I didn't think I would. <laughs> All right, we have a motion to approve and form this second. slate of projects. And a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank appreciate you much. The we appreciate advanced cooperation on the caulking. And we, yeah. we appreciate all you guys are doing to, to uh, promote our city and um, more good things to come. I promise. Our venues as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. And um, I'll take just a point of personal privilege to note I see Toby Compton in the house. He snuck in somehow, our former executive director, who uh, worked very hard uh, when he was with the Sports Authority and certainly uh, getting this ballpark uh, up and running and constructed. And it's good to see you back, Toby. All right, uh, next up we have the Bridgestone Arena and Ford Ice Center report. 
Good morning, everybody. I'm Kyle Clayton with the Bridgestone Arena National Predators and Ford Ice Center. Uh, Doug mentioned earlier, baseball season's kicking off. It's so exciting, but then I think Bob Flynn actually mentioned it first, the playoff season. We we're so excited where we're at. Uh, as most of you probably know, we went to Anaheim. We won our first two games out there, which is so exciting because no hockey expert picked us to win the series at all. So we're up two to nothing. And of course, unfortunately, Tuesday night, we didn't quite have the show we wanted. Uh, we were very grateful. A lot of you came out for our uh, pregame reception before the games. So it was fun to to get to know you guys a little bit better and have that kind of situation. Uh, we didn't win that game, so we're down 2-1, to one, but we do have game four tonight, so it'll be exciting. I know we'll have 17,000 in the building tonight. It'll be nice and gold and loud, so we're very excited where we're, where we're headed. Hopefully we'll win tonight, have game five in Anaheim on Saturday, close it out, and be ready for round two. So high expectations. We're very excited where we sit. Uh, much like last month, I'll kind of do a historical, talk about the financials, and I'll bring up my buddy David Kells up here to talk about what's going on now and what's coming up in the future. Uh, so the packet in front of you should be for February, you know, one of our shorter months, but we actually had 12 events that month, so that was great. Uh, we had eight hockey games and four concerts uh, that helped boost our numbers. Our revenue sits about 14% increase year over year compared to last year, and we're about 10% ahead of budget, so that's fantastic. And keeping our expenses in line, we're only about 9% ahead of last year and tracking about 4% uh, to budget. So all in all, it's, it's a great year. Uh, February helped us. It, it's, it's moving along. March uh, was a great month for us, so it'll it'll keep continuing with the SEC tournament. So we're pacing very well this year. We're very excited about where we're sitting on the arena side as far as financials. Uh, like I said, we had 12 events. It was just about 146,000 people in the building that month for February, which is fantastic. Like I said, in March we had the SEC, so that attendance number is just going to keep growing throughout the uh, remainder of the year. Uh, of those four non-hockey events, we had uh, 12,000 or 14,000 people in the building for Winter Jam. It's an annual Christian concert that comes to town. It's fantastic. Uh, then Mickey Mouse and Friends, my sons were very excited about that one. We had, uh, I think, 10,000 people in the building for two shows for that. So that's always fun to have the family aspect come in. We, we love doing that. And then we had our big Monday Night Raw, WWE. They do a great job. They come at least twice a year every year. And so that continues to grow. And we had another 12,000 people in the building that night. So it's just a fantastic, it's a good spread of events for what we had in February. And then along with that, we had eight home eight home games for the Preds. Uh, if you'll remember, the Preds, February was kind of the time we're coming out of the All-Star break. We, we weren't playing the way we wanted to play. And February, we kind of took off. We, uh, we ended up closing out the uh, month with po points in nine consecutive games. It's kind of started our playoff push, got us to where we wanted to be. We started playing like we wanted to play after the Ryan Johansson trade. So things started to take off at that point and kind of get us to where we wanted to be. Philip Forsberg had two hat tricks that month, which was huge. He was an offensive catalyst for us, so it really put us in playoff position where we wanted to be in February. It really took us off to put us to where we are right now. On the uh, foundation side, Predators Foundation, we had our Nash Vegas Casino Night in February. That's always a lot of fun. We were generate about $140,000 just through that one event, so that contributes to our a million dollars that we annually hand out through, that found, or through our foundation, which is just fantastic. Uh, and one of, one of the fun things we had to do in February, and I think we did this last year, uh, we had our 24 hours of hockey celebration. So we had uh, an NHL hockey game, obviously, with the, I think it was the last day of February with the St. Louis Blues games, which we won five to nothing. That was one of Forsberg's hat tricks. Then we had a college hockey game. We had some high school hockey games. We had some youth league games. We had military games. We had some women's hockey games and some sled hockey games. So it was a full 24 hours of hockey. It was so exciting, so much fun. And it was just a great way to cap off the month of February. Uh, tied into that, Fort Ice Center had a lot of help providing those games, providing those teams to come to Bridgestone to play. They had a huge month as well. They uh, hosted the SEC College Hockey Tournament, and they actually uh, – were awarded the hosting privileges through 2019. So that's a fun event that we'll have down there in Antioch for the next few years. It's a, it's a lot of fun. There was they always bring I think it's eight teams within that tournament, and you know SEC hockey, SEC in general, those fan bases they they are get behind almost any sport they can just to talk trash to other SEC teams. So it's a lot of fun having them in our building. Uh, they also had another tournament out there. Uh, that included about 16 teams. What happened with that was February was the month that A game Sportsplex closed, which was very unfortunate for the just hockey in Middle Tennessee in general. But we were able to contact those teams, and we actually had a friendly tournament, so they didn't have their tournament canceled. So they were able to come over to our building and play a, a friendly tournament. So you know, we our learn to skate programs. We hit on this every month. It's through the roof. We had 8,000 public skaters in the month of February. It's just a great time to be in Middle Tennessee, especially in Southeast Davis.
Davidson County. We're doing amazing things down there. We're so excited about it. Um, that's really the month of February. If anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer before Mr. Kells comes up. I, sure. I touched on this at a prior meeting, but I, in reviewing your, your report, it states that Bridgestone Arena wants to be in the finish of the year as one of the most attended concert arenas in the world. Old Star ranks as the fifth busiest arena in the United States and 12th in the world, and um, fifth in the U.S. and seventh in the world according to the venue today charts. Now, does, does that include uh, uh, calculating how busy you are at the SEC tournament? It's just concerts. Um, I think it's mostly just related to concerts. I think I think the two charts, Polestar and Venue City, I think they kind of measure two different things. Okay. Uh, when Mr. Kells comes up, I think he might be able to dive a little bit deeper into which which one is calculating which. But I do think they're a little bit different on what they're measuring. I just think it's incredible uh, the, the turnaround that you guys do. Not only that, the SEC tournament, the Predators scheduling, all the concerts. It's pretty remarkable. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Mr. Kells? Thank you. Hi everybody, David Kells with Bridgestone Arena and the National Predators. Uh, to finish up what you started with Kyle, uh, Polestar is strictly concert attendance. It's no basketball tournaments, it's no hockey games, it's just turnstile attendance through the door. And then Venue Today is also just registering uh, concert, but it goes by gross. So that's how the two charts differ a little bit. But yeah, it does not include all the other events, conferences, or anything else. It's strictly uh, you know rock shows and, and touring events. It doesn't count wrestling or anything like that. So, um, As Kyle stole a lot of the thunder of the excitement of the playoffs. Um, thanks again to everybody who was able to come out to uh, Tuesday's reception. It was a great time, a good game, obviously not the, the result we wanted. Uh, since our last meeting, we've hosted a, a bunch of great events. We've had Martin Lawrence, uh, Keith Urban, and Vince Gills all for the Hall of Benefit. Um, it's a semi-annual event that uh, all the proceeds go to the Hall of Fame. They curate an amazing night of music um, and had stars all across the country genre to help raise some funds for the Hall of Fame across the street. Uh, we also hosted Mumford & Sons. That was their first arena headlining show in town. They've played festivals, they've done multi-nights at the Ryman. This is their first big, big arena show in town and uh, everybody backstage was thrilled to be to be part of it for sure. And uh, closed out this regular season with three home Preds games. Uh, also, since we last met, we've announced uh, several shows and put many of them up on sale. Uh, Carrie Underwood's up and on sale, Hillsong United, Cirque du Soleil, and g Easy. And uh, this Friday we have Keith Urban coming back. That'll be in November and that's his own headlining show. Um, just a return for that. Um, out at Force Ice, Ford Ice Center, we hosted um, several championships. The Junior Preds Cup, which is the high school state championship, and the GNAS Championship, which is the local. Um, both were won by Ravenwood High School. And uh, the Junior Predators wrapped up their season with a pair of teams all bound for national tournaments. So it just shows how everything's grown in this community. People are able to represent Middle Tennessee and all of Tennessee on a national scale that, um, that we're always proud to see and send folks out. And finally, uh, with the regular season behind us, some of the uh, NHL reporting has started to come out. Uh, the National Predators were fourth in the NHL overall revenue growth at 14%, and second in average uh, ticket price growth at 20%. So it shows we're able to move that ball forward and you know keep, um, keep pace with our um, payrolls and keep pace with the other hockey league teams. Um, and part of this growth will continue with the playoffs being the best time to renew and the most exciting time of the year, uh, selling new season tickets, renewing new season ticket holders. And Nat told me that we're currently on pace. Uh, if we continue this clip, we'll probably sell out every game next year. Um, as Kyle also mentioned, we took a 2-0 lead for the first time in franchise history. So that's good momentum going into tonight's game. Uh, and tonight we will have uh, the fan giveaways, the Bam Bam Sticks. They light up. If, so if you guys go home, turn out the lights, bang them together while you're watching the game tonight. Make some noise from, from your couch or if you're at the game as well. Um, we'll have the gold walk. We'll have the smash car out there. I hope some of you guys got to take a whack at it with the, with the sledgehammer. It's all duck, decked out in Ducks gear and Ducks logo. So um, it looks a lot worse than it did at the beginning of Tuesday's game, for sure. Um, uh, also, part of the playoff fun, the uh, uh, foundation is, in, uh, is participating in a beard-a-thon. So, if you'd like to grow a playoff beard, uh, contribute money to the Pediatric Cancer 365 Fund, just go to nationalpredators.com. Um, you can sign up there. Um, there's links to send it out via your social outlets and you know have your friends back you and your beard as it grows. Uh, Emmett's obviously on board with Kyle and Danny and Sean and everybody the rest of us. So it's an exciting time of year for sure. 
Any other questions about uh, the Arena Predators or Ford Ice? David, what time is the game tonight? Tonight is a 7 o'clock puck drop. 7 o'clock. Excellent. Okay. My husband will be there. Excellent. He's excited. Um, great. Any questions? Thank you. We really appreciate everything. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, we appreciate everyone participating today. Uh, we know everyone has tight schedules and busy timelines. So thank you for um, all your service to the Sports Authority. Our last, uh, I think in March, Monica sent out an email to the board asking um, about interest to service facility liaisons. Uh, Monica's constantly working to streamline uh, the office and and, um, and do more with less and being as efficient as possible. Possible. And um, we believe that having uh, board representatives as facility liaisons will help uh, streamline some of our, our work. And so um, I'm happy to announce um, the following uh, liaisons for Nissan Stadium, Lisa Howe. We are, uh, she's new and eager and we're ready to haze her there. And uh, Emmett Wynn will be our uh, liaison for Bridgestone Arena and Ford Ice Center and Bob Abrada with a uh, will be our representative for the ballpark here. So um, with that, is there any other business? Okay, great. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. We are adjourned.